hello guys you're welcome to this video and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at how to decode and play back audio using ffmpeg library all right so today's video is going to be a gentle introduction to decoding um, audio using the ffmpeg library so the first thing we have to do is to get ourselves um, some audio files that we're going to be using for illustrations so I think I could search for free music, I guess. I think I think that's better. Um, where do I find free music? All right. Okay. Yep. What is this? I don't know. I really do not know. The hell am I supposed to search for? Um, I'm just gonna search for. It doesn't matter. I'm just gonna go to the channel. I'm gonna get myself um, some rock music. And here, okay, I got a couple of them. I got Blue Wave Theory. I think we could play that. Uh, I'm gonna try. To play. Okay! That's pretty dope. Okay, so we could take that, um, we could use that, um, so I'm just going to download it, uh, well, I agree, I don't care, really, it doesn't matter, I agree, okay, uh, so I'm going to save that, and, let's see, once the download is done, um, I'm just going to copy the path, alright, um, let's see, nope, cannot so I'm just gonna open the folder I'm gonna copy the path to the song just like that right so we got ourselves uh, an mp3 song we can actually play so the first thing we have to do is to install the ffmpeg alright and I already have mpeg installed you can do it with your package manager if you're running Linux and if you're on Windows, then you're gonna have to figure out how to do it because you know, um, I don't really care about Windows users um, because Windows suck, all right. So, if you if you want to be, uh, you know, you want to get a feel of what real programming looks like, I think you should come over to Linux, all right. Uh, I'm just kidding, anyways. But Windows users, you're gonna have to figure out how to get the FFmpeg libraries installed. Um, and do not confuse the FFmpeg libraries with the FFmpeg binary, all right? So the FFmpeg uh, program is the one that you use for converting, merging, and splitting audio and video and stuff like that. And uh, so the libraries that underpin um, the FFmpeg program itself is the um, libraries that we're going to be using in this video. We're going to be coding in C++ using those libraries so um yeah so once you get them installed the there is one more thing we're gonna need to um add and we're gonna be using mini audio for the audio playback because after we decode the audio using ffmpeg we also have to play the audio back all right so i'm gonna be using mini audio and it's a single header file um uh, library that allows you to just include one header file and you can use it to play audio and it works for every, um, um, you know, it's cross-platform, works on pretty much every platform, works on um, desktop, you know, Mac, Linux, and uh, Windows, plus um, Android, iOS, BSD, and even web, all right? So, yeah, so the, the, this library is pretty cool, all right? Um, so, we're going to be taking a look at how to do that. So, let's just hop over to here. You can see I have this simple project set up in, with Visual Studio Code. And I have just the mini audio header file that I've downloaded from the website. So just click on this to download the uh, mini audio.h and then include it somewhere in your project. All right. So once you've done that, the next thing we want to do is to I'm going to create a simple CMIC project here so that I could, uh, you know, so CMIC can help me to manage that. You can use whatever, um, whatever IDE or, you know, whatever editor you care about but I'm gonna be using Visual Studio Code with CMake right um, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna find the quick start for CMake I don't care about the environment it's asking me for 
project name um, it's gonna be audio decoding and it's gonna be an executable <clears throat> okay so it creates a simple CMake project for me as you can see here now I don't care about the whole CPAC thing so I'm just gonna delete that alright um, also let me see if I can actually increase the font size here I don't know um, yep I think that's big enough yeah all right well I'm gonna close this out too and then I don't care about any really testing or whatever all these are so the next thing I'm gonna add to this is just gonna be the target link libraries so I'm going to be linking to I'm gonna be linking to the lib AV format, uh, actually AV format, AV codec and AV util. So those are the um, libraries that I'm gonna be using in this video. Oh, I'm, I'm also gonna need the SW resample, all right? The, the SW resample library so that we can resample the audio frames. Uh, you see what I'm talking about when we get started, all right? Um, so I'm gonna close this and open up the main.cpp file. Get out of my face! What the hell is going on here? Um, so what I want to do first of all is include the FFmpeg libraries, and because I'm using C++, um, I need to wrap the includes inside of this extern C declaration, and this simply means that I do not want um, C++ to perform name mangling on. You know whatever symbols that it imports from the ffmpeg libraries so i'm going to include the av format slash av format at h i'm also going to include the av codec slash av codec dot h slash av util dot h oh, dot g all right i'm also going to include the, the sw sample slash SW sample H just like that now once you have these libraries in, um, imported the next thing we have to do is to start preparing to decode our um, audio all right uh, we need to first of all open up the audio file so what I'm gonna do before I start writing any code is I like to think about um, uh, before I write any code I like to outline things that I like to do so that it could guide me when I'm coding. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do right now. So the first thing I wanna do is to open uh, the audio file. Then I want to decode the audio. And then I wanna play back the audio. So this means that I'm going to open the audio file, first of all, then I'm going to have to decode all of the audio samples that I want to play, and then I'm going to have to store them inside of somewhere, and then third, I'm going to have to play back the audio. So these are the three steps that I'm going to take in this video, and this is what I'm going to do. Um, right, so in order to open the audio file, this is actually uh, simple. The AV format, as part of the the part of the FFmpeg library, the AV format library allows us to open files and read information about those files. It, you know, basically, it, it's got a couple of modules in them where uh, one module performs input output, which is I/O, and that is cross-platform, by the way, because um, FFmpeg works on I think pretty much every platform, all right, mobile and desktop. Um, so um, the I/O is also cross-platform. So FFmpeg will help you. Well, will assist you in opening up the media file, and it can also read information about that media using this libav format library. All right. So how do we do that? First of all, we're gonna need an AV format context. So we're gonna create a pointer to that, and I'm gonna call it format context. Now I'm gonna initialize this to no pointer to begin with. And then I'm going to say AV format open input. All right. Now this is going to need a couple of uh, parameters. You can see the format context. I'm going to pass in the address of the format context pointer. Um, secondly, it's going to need a URL, which is uh, the path to the media file we copied earlier. And third, it's going to need 
a an input format that we do not have so we're just gonna pass in no pointer options we don't really know what options to pass in so we're just gonna pass in no pointer too all right um i think i need to change the word wrap settings for vs code because i don't like i need this thing to actually wrap so i'm gonna have to go to settings and i want to search for wrap i think it's like word wrap uh text editor what the I don't know. Wrap, wrap, wrap. On. Yep. Let's see. Does it wrap now? Yep, it does. Cool. Alright. Um I think I should also change the font size while I'm at it. Um so I'm gonna do that right now. Um uh, font size. Font size, yep. So I'm gonna change this to 18. Then I'm gonna close this. And then I'm gonna go back to what this was before. Yep. Okay, I think that's cool. All right, so we're gonna open up the media file. Now this is going to return an integer, which is more or less like the status result, telling us whether the uh, input file was successfully opened or not. All right. So we're gonna check the results to know whether the media was successfully opened. Uh, so I'm gonna say if uh, red is less than zero because if the media was successfully open and there was no errors then it's going to return zero so we're gonna make sure that uh, we check to make sure that the result is zero if there is an error it's going to return a negative integer to tell you all right um, so we're gonna say if red is less than zero then we're gonna print an error uh, to standard error okay and it's gonna say unable to open media or something right and then we're probably gonna return minus one okay now once we're able to successfully open the media we have to tell the uh, ffmpeg to op to read information about this media because as soon as it opens the media file sometimes um, it's not gonna have enough information to give you about the streams inside of the file and you know stuff like that so we actually have to tell it to go read information about the file and get as much as it can so that we can query those information from it so it's just gonna be read equals to if we format find stream info okay uh, this is gonna be the format context so we're gonna pass in the format context we don't know what options to pass in again, so we're just gonna pass that in. Again, we check if it's less than zero, uh, the result, okay, and unable to find stream info, all right? And then we're gonna return minus one again. All right, so if we're able to find the stream information and we've successfully opened up the media, then we're good. Okay, we can start, um, you know, we can start decoding this media file. But before we do that, we also need to know because a media file can contain multiple streams. This is an MP3 media file, um, so it probably just contains an audio stream and an album art. Okay, but we don't really care about the, um, we don't really care about the album art. We care only really about the audio stream. Um, so we have to get the index of that stream from this format context And if you want to know the number of streams inside of a media, you can do that with this um, Number of streams inside of media and It's gonna be percent D um, Let's see, I'm gonna put a new line right there uh, And it's gonna be the format context NB streams this is this is going to contain the number of streams inside of uh, this media file that we're actually reading all right so we're gonna know the number of streams we have inside of there and uh, yeah so let's move forward and uh, the next thing we have to do is to get the audio stream index like I said so I'm gonna say index equals to uh, uh, AV find best stream okay so this means that we want to find the best stream inside of this media what what best stream do we want to find uh it's going to ask us for the format context which is just basically the format context and the media tab so it's asking us what type of stream do we want to find all right so we want the av media type audio 
and then the one thing stream number we don't know so we're passing minus one the related stream number we don't care we don't even know so we're passing minus one now we get to an interesting uh point here it's asking for a decoder red okay we don't know what that means so we're just gonna pass in a null pointer right now oh i can't type null pointer and then flags we also don't know so we pass in zero and if you if you read the documentation it says flags none are currently defined so we don't even care about it we just pass in zero all right now if index is less than zero then you know the media uh, probably we don't have an audio stream inside of this media so yeah I'm just gonna do std error again uh, no audio stream inside of this file and yeah so we're gonna have to return minus one because we don't have any audio to play all right so if index is actually zero or you know greater than zero then we can start you know working with that um so the next thing we do is we need a decoder so remember here where it was asking us for decoder red but uh we actually just returned an all we should have just passed in an all pointer because we don't really know what that means uh now we got two options we can actually pass in a valid uh address of a pointer to a decoder so that ffmpeg will find a decoder as it's looking for the stream and it's, it's going to give us a decoder uh, a decoder that we, that we can actually use to decode the stream or we could find the decoder manually now how do we find the decoder uh manually i'm going to show you both processes all right so first of all we could create an av codec structure here i'm going to call it a decoder and we have to initialize it to null pointer and then we're going to pass the address of the decoder here and what okay i'm going to spell decoder correctly um so what is going to happen now is that ffmpeg is going to populate this decoder structure uh the pointer with a, an appropriate value once it uh, finds the audio stream so this is the easy way to do it but if for some reason you can actually do it this way you could pass in null pointer again uh, the other way to do it is to get the decode the decodec ID for the specific stream index and that's what we're gonna do so I'm gonna create an AV codec again uh, decoder set it to no pointer again and actually here yeah, I could initialize it here okay so what we're gonna do is say that this is equal to AV codec find decoder so we're asking it to find a decoder with this with the specific codec ID now what codec ID do we pass in well we know that this is an mp3 file so we could pass in AV codec ID mp3 all right and this is going to this, this is going to give us an mp3 decoder all right but this is not good enough because sometimes we don't know what kind of audio file we want to play so we could get the codec id from the stream given to us by the format context all right and the way we do that is format context streams at the specific index okay so we 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 just got a stream at the index that we got before remember the stream index that we got from if you find best stream and then we do codec par and then we do codec id all right so what is this line here this is simply saying i want to find the decoder well from where the format context stream at the index you know the audio stream at the specific index because the format context like i said can contain multiple audio video subtitle or whatever streams so we want to get the stream at the specific index and the stream has some codec parameters which are basically information about the stream all right about the codec inside of the stream because you know for an mp3 media file for example it's got an mp3 um it's got an mp3 codec inside of them the the data encoded inside of that is mp3 so the information about that the data inside of there is going to be stored inside these codec parameters and part of the information is the codec id which is what we need to pass to AV codec find decoder to give us a valid decoder uh, a valid mp3 decoder in this case because we're playing an mp3 media file 
all right now if the decoder doesn't exist it's going to give us a null pointer so we're going to check that uh decoder then we're just going to do f print f std error no decoder found and then we're going to return okay return minus one all right and once we found the decoder then we're good to go we're almost done here all right uh, we're just uh, about 44 lines, so we're, we're, we're good. We're good. All right The next thing we need to do is to get ourselves a Codec context because this decoder structure is just like uh, uh, Something that describes a decoder. Okay, it doesn't actually do anything You know the decoder the, the functions that we that, that we call to do something on the decoder or the functions that we call to decode actually need somewhere to store the decoder state all right and that is what an av codec context is all right so av codec context uh codec context uh, okay and we get it called av codec alloc context and just like that we're gonna allocate a codec context for that it looks like yeah i think it's alloc context three yeah i don't know why it is three at the end of it but that's what they called it all right so we have you can see you need to pass in a codec id here now you don't get a pass in a codec id you could pass in a null pointer it doesn't matter but if you already have a decoder then it's just better to pass it in here all right and this is going to allocate uh the codec context for you and now you can start doing stuff with it but before you do that you have to actually give the decoder context some information because at this point all we did was find the decoder and now the decoder doesn't know what like what way when we need to tell the decoder to decode something the decoder needs to know what am i decoding you No, know, for example if it wants to decode a video it needs to know the width and height that the video is decoding uh you know some other information like that in the case of audio it needs to know the sample rate you know the sample format of what it's going to decode and some other things like that like you know uh i don't know basic you know the number of channels of the audio for example and you know several stuff and how do we get this information again we can get it from the streams all right and just to make this clearer there's something called an av stream which is exactly where i'm getting this um streams information from so if i cut this off then this is the stream all right this is the stream the AV stream is where information about each stream of the uh, of a particular media is stored all right so here we need to give information about data stored inside of this stream to the decoder all right so the way to do that is called AV codec parameters um, to context all right and what this is uh, just a minute so we're gonna pass in the codec context and then the streams codec par. So what this does is that it's going to copy the information about this uh, about the stream into this um, decoder context. All right. So that's what it's gonna do. So the next thing we need to do once we've copied is to now open the decoder. And so we gotta check again. AV codec open two. And what this is going to do is going to open the decoder and initialize it so that we can actually use it to start decoding stuff. If you don't open the decoder before you start using it, this is not going to work. All right. So we're going to pass in the codec context, and then we're going to pass in the decoder again. And options, we don't have options, so we're just passing no pointer. Now, if the decoder wasn't, uh, oh, you know, if sometimes when you try to open a decoder, it doesn't work. So, you know, you get a check for that fact. If rate is less than zero, um, then, you know, couldn't open decoder. Uh, so if the decoder wasn't able to be opened, then you can actually use it to decode anything. So you better off just returning and then, you know, quitting the program, all right? Um, so if we couldn't open the decoder, we fail, and then we're just gonna return. Now that we've opened the decoder, actually get into the um, sweet spot all right now we gotta start decoding so all of this the first step that i highlighted here um is actually where we open the audio file and initialize the decoder 
all right so the next thing we gotta do we now is to decode the audio and the way that works is that we're gonna tell something called the demuxer to actually take out the audio um, uh, packet all right the compressed audio packet and give it to us so that we can give it to the decoder to decode and then uh, we need to then do whatever we want with the decoded frames all right um, so the next thing we gotta do is to create something called an AV packet all right so AV packet a lock now the AV packet like I said represents a compressed um, frame all right and the what a compressed frame simply is is like you know a number of samples of audio data that you can actually play back but because it is compressed the the um the sound card is not really going to understand how to translate the compressed data so you need to first of all decode it which is why we need a decoder in the first place all right um so a packet is going to store you know a chunk of that compressed data all right so which means that our demuxer is what is going to be taking those chunks out bit by bit and then we're going to be decoding and probably playing it back or storing it somewhere before we then you know proceed with the rest all right so we need a packet for that now once we decode a packet we're going to be decoding the packet into raw frames so we need a, a frame structure which is represented using this av frame okay so i'm going to need to allocate a frame structure so this is going to store a decompressed packet which is a which is basically a frame a raw data that we can actually send to our sound card and get you know um, audio output all right so that's cool mm. yeah so the next thing I need to do now is to start decoding so I'm gonna have the while loop um, Uh, the format context and the packet now what am i doing here i'm simply saying while av read frame so this is gonna this is the av read frame is going to return zero if it was able to successfully read a frame all right but if if for some reason it wasn't able to read a packet actually this is called av read frame but it actually reads a compressed frame okay a compressed packet and you can see here we're passing the packet you know for it to actually read so basically what this is is um, when you call AV read frame it's gonna go to the media file you know you know, you know read a, read a bunch of uh, packets and then put it inside this uh, uh, AV packet structure that we've um, created and it's gonna return zero if it was successful all right so I'm inverting that to make sure that our we, we continue while this operation is successful now if it returns anything less than zero, then this function is you no. Know, this the while loop is going to translate it to true. So I'm just inverting that to make sure that it's false. So essentially, what this line of code is doing is, you know, this uh, block, this while block is going to be like execute whatever is in this while loop as long as we have a frame to read. Another way of writing this to make this even clearer is to say while AV read frame is zero. Okay, I think this looks, uh, you know. This looks more readable for some people, so I'm just gonna keep it like that. All right. So while we're able to read a frame, the next thing we have to do is now to take the frame, uh, the the packet or the compressed frame, whatever you want to call it. We need to take that and send it to the decoder. All right. But first, because FFmpeg, like I told you before, we have um, this this could this, this probably doesn't have to be an mp3 file remember it could be an mp4 an mkv or whatever whatever media file we want to use in this case we're just testing with an audio file an mp3 to be precise but sometimes it's going to give you a stream that is not audio okay sometimes it's going to be video sometimes it's going to be subtitle so it's just going to read and then it's going to probably be like okay this is an audio packet this is a video packet this is a subtitle packet so it's going to be like yeah i'm going to do the um um so you know so that's basically how it is so the best way for you to um, um, do this is to be, is to check when you receive a packet if it corresponds to a specific stream index um, so what this is is we're gonna just be like if packet stream index does not equal to index continue 
now where did i get index from if you remember what we were looking for the best stream remember the best audio stream so we were given some index all right good we could also use the streams uh, in specific index you know, we could write it as um stream index and it's still gonna work because index here and the other index here is actually the same all right so we could keep it like that all right so basically we're like if it is not the audio stream whatever packet you return if it is not the audio packet we don't care about it so we're just going to continue cool now the next thing we have to do all right is to now send the data to the decoder and we do that uh, we have right already send packet so we send the packets to the decoder uh codec context and the packet okay so this is going to send the packet to the decoder for decoding now if red is less than zero for some reason um this probably means that the um the decoder probably didn't like what we sent to it for some weird reasons possibly we sent the wrong packet and the decoder couldn't understand it or you know we got some corrupt data or whatever but sometimes this is going to return something called AV error E again now if it returns AV error E again this means that send the packet again after getting frames out you have to remember this okay if this returns AV error E again what this is telling you is that hey make sure you call AV code the same packet with this packet after you have you know retrieve all the frames inside of the decoder because sometimes the decoder will buffer frames for some reasons all right so you so if the internal buffer is full you have to read out all of the frames and that's what we're gonna do right now all right so if red equals to av error e again all right so if it says try again then we're gonna actually read frames so to read frames we're gonna do av codec receive frame okay receive frame codec context and frame so int red equals to that all right now so this is telling us that we are going to receive a raw frame now this is also as you can see this also has its own uh, results so it's gonna return whether the frame was successfully received or not and if the frame was not received it's going to also communicate that fact so this one this um, receive frame can also return av error e again which means to tell you that hey go and send some packets um go and send some packets and uh how do i explain this yeah send me some packets and then come and try to read more frames all right um so basically you know but the thing about the api is that you're never gonna get av error e again for both AV codec send packet and AV codec receive frame. So if you get E again for send packet, you're not gonna get it for receive frame. And if you get E again for receive frame, you're not gonna get it for send packet. So the way I like to do this is um, actually, um, it doesn't matter the return type, I always read frames after sending a packet. So what this means is that I only check if this is not E again, then this is probably a legitimate error so so basically i'm like if whatever i get was not e again um uh, then something bad happened and probably need to quit the program or do something all right um now i'm just gonna log the error to, to communicate that fact and then i'm gonna actually have a while loop here okay and then i'm gonna have while this, uh, what is this? Yep. okay uh well this is greater than or equal to zero actually you could just say while it is equal to zero right and so what this means is that when we, when we send a packet then we try to receive frames so sometimes when you send a packet you can receive multiple frames of data all right uh, what is this expected expression? Oh, that's crazy. I have too many. 
All right, so sometimes when you send a packet, you are going to um, return, you're going to need to receive multiple frames from the decoder. So when I send a packet, I want to receive all of the frames from the decoder before I go to send another packet again. And that's what I'm doing here. Now we have to resample the frame. Why do we need to resample the frame? Uh, most audio uh, decoders in FFmpeg actually returns um, the the um, frames in a format called AV sample FMT FLTP floating point planar. So, which means that it, it basically takes each uh, 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 channel and stores its samples in uh, a non-interleaved manner. You know, um, and we, the most of the um, playback libraries don't actually work with planar data. Instead, they want the samples to actually be interleaved. And that is why we're going to need a resampler to take care of that for us. So we need to create ourselves a resampler. And we do that using the SWR context. Okay. And SWR alloc set ops. Passing a null pointer to the beginning. Uh, did, I, did, I, did, did I do this correctly? Actually, I don't think I did. Actually, I did. I did. I don't know what's wrong here. Uh, oh, this was supposed to be a pointer. Even then, it's not working. I'm just gonna check the documentation. All right. So here we have the. It needs an SWR context. First of all, we don't have that, so we're just gonna pass a no pointer. And next, it needs an output channel layout, output sample format, output sample rate. Where do we get that from? Well, our coded parameters is actually having those information. So we're gonna do uh, the output. The output channel layout is gonna be stored in the stream codec par channel layout. We don't wanna change the channel layout, so we're just gonna keep that. Uh, we're also going to need the sample format and the sample rate. Now, the output sample format we want to change. So, we're going to change that to AV sample FMT FLT. Okay, so we're going to be using float for our sample format. And the sample rate, we're going to we're going to leave that as is. Codec par sample rate. Also, we're going to need to initialize what else? The channel layout, sample format, sample rate again, but this time is for the input. So basically, this is for the output. This is for you know what what is going to be resampling to. So now we, we need to give it the data where of what is going to be resampling from, and it's largely the same, except for the sample format, which is going to be stored in codec par uh, codec par format I believe or sample FMT I can't really remember now next we also have to initialize the okay so we got log offset and log context well log offset is zero log, con log context is gonna be no pointer I hope I was able to initialize this and actually I should pr oh actually I didn't have a name that was crazy. Uh, I didn't actually name the resampler. I think that was why the method actually didn't work. Oh, jeez. Anyways, see, this is format. And we gotta cast this to AV sample format. Just like that. Now, we should have our resampler initialized. Now, if it, if, if our resampler is not initialized, you should probably check for that. But most of the time, I don't think I've ever seen uh, SOBR context not being initialized from this. But, you know, anything can happen in programming, so you should check for that. Right. So, now we have to resample the frame. And to do that, we're going to create another frame called resampled frame. Maybe frame a lock. Now, once we've created that, once we've allocated the resampled frame, we need to give it a couple of information. Uh, samples frame, sample rate is going to be the frame sample rate. 
sampled frames uh, channel layout it's gonna be the frames channel layout basically the information we passed in here all right uh, we're also gonna need the sampled frames um, uh, we're also gonna need the resamples frames channels yeah we could copy that to frames channels and then the format so uh, those channels a channel uh, resampled frames format is actually gonna be a resample FMT float flt all right so this is float this is basically a floating uh point uh you know for sample format but with the channels interleaved correctly interleaved then we can send that to the you know audio playback library that we're using all right now once we've resampled uh once we set our resampled frames what we need to do is say swr um, actually, I don't need to. Yeah, okay, I could use that. SWR convert frame. Okay, so we're gonna pass in the resampler, and the output frame is gonna be the resampled frame, and the input frame is gonna be frame. Now, here, if the resampled frame, uh, if this thing returns anything that is less than zero, then you know that you were unable to successfully resample. Uh, convert this frame all right so yeah that is that uh but if it returns zero then we're good all right but i'm not gonna check just make sure that anything negative that it returns here is simply you know uh a failure and it was unable to resample the frame so the next thing we could do now is call av frame on ref and this is going to uh on reference the frame uh, that we received from the decoder basically it's going to free the memory uh the data contained by the decoder but we're still gonna keep the resampled frame for a minute because we need to take out the raw frames now in this case there are a couple of things we could do with the resampled frame at this point since we've actually gotten a, a usable frame what we could do is send it to the audio output but right now we don't actually have any audio output so we need to keep this inside of, inside of a buffer all right we need to buffer this uh you know all these raw frames so that we can actually play them back and how do we do that? Well, very simple. We're just gonna go back up and have a, add another include. Um, we're gonna have it's gonna be in the AV util slash audio fifo. Now this audio fifo is simply uh, a simple first in first out buffer that is gonna help us store audio samples. All right. So it's basically used for storing audio samples. So that's just what the audio fifo is. All right. Uh, I want you to be keeping track of the objects we are creating and allocating because we're gonna need to free them, you know, when it's due, uh, you know, in the due time actually. Right. So we're gonna create an AV audio FIFO. AV audio FIFO alloc. Now this needs a couple of information. The sample format. AV sample FMT FLT. Which this is asking us for, hey, what kind of samples do you want to store? Uh, so I'm just gonna store. I'm, I want to store float. So that's what the sample format uh, is actually asking for. There, the channels. Well, we want to store stream codec par channels. That's what we want to store. Number of samples. This is asking us for the you know, initial size of you know, what we want. Uh, how how big the sample is gonna be. It doesn't really matter what we pass in here. But I always pass in one because I know that uh, when you start filling the FIFO buffer is gonna grow automatically all right so just just pass doesn't even matter don't pass in the negative value because I don't know what's gonna happen if you do that but just pass in one or something bigger but not too big so you don't crash your program all right um so the next thing we have to do once we've actually converted our frame is to save the data inside of this FIFO and the way to do that is call AV audio FIFO write Actually, I don't really like Visual Studio Code. This is actually extremely slow. I don't know what's going on. All right. Um, so I pass in the FIFO, and the data is gonna be. I, I have to pass in the frame, uh, the resample frames data, so that I can copy um, the raw samples into the FIFO. And the number of samples is actually gonna be in the resample frames nb underscore samples. Now, where did I get the number of samples from? Well, if you realize, I didn't actually allocate any memory with the resampled frame. 
So the SWR convert frame is going to allocate the memory, set the number of samples field, and uh, yeah, and that's how we get that value. All right, cool. Now, once we write um, the FIFO, we're done. We're pretty much done. That's all we need to do. But we have to free. Uh, we have to free the resampled frame so that we do not leak memory. All right. Now, once we finish with all of this, so by the time we're done with this while loop, we would have decoded all of the audio and it's going to be stored inside of this FIFO buffer and we can actually use it to play back the audio. And that's pretty much it with um, FFmpeg, but we're not actually done yet. We actually need to play back the audio so that the user can actually listen to it. And how do we do that? Well, let's go back. So here I was telling you about mini audio and it's, uh, it's you know it's a simple library that allows you to uh, play back audio and you can also use it to record audio but I haven't actually tried that but I've actually used it in my Android application to you know um, to test um, how it actually works I, I, I think I tested it on Linux and Android and it actually works great all right so it's cross-platform as you can see it works on pretty much every platform um, but how do we actually use the library? Well, <clears throat> it's got a couple of examples. So let's take a look. The first thing we have to do is define mini audio implementation and then include the header file. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to paste it here. But then I don't actually um, I have the mini audio included here. So this should work. All right, cool 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 uh, so the next thing we gotta do is what exactly we're actually gonna need an ma device okay so you can ignore all of this rubbish and we're gonna need an ma device config and an ma device i'm gonna copy those right now and the next thing we're gonna do is initialize the device configuration I'm gonna copy all of this and let's take a look. Uh, so you can see here, in order to initialize the device config, we say MA device config init. And this is going to uh, ask us for the type of uh, configuration we want. And you're gonna see that this is gonna say MA device type playback. So you have two types of um, devices you could create. You could create one that is um, for recording audio or you could create one that is used for playing audio. We don't care about recording in this video, so we're just going to use the device type playback. Now, it's going to ask us for the format, okay? And this is an MA format, so we could delete all of this. We have MA format um, F32. That's what we're going to use, all right? Then we is asking us for the number of channels. Well, we know where to get that from. We have stream codec par channels. We got that. Now the sample rate. Well, we also know where to get that from. Stream codec par sample rate. All right. Now the data callback. Well, we get we have to create a function that is gonna call uh, when it needs data. So let's create that. The data callback is actually here, so we can copy that. Make sure you copy code as much as possible because, uh, you know, especially example codes because, you know, you're, you're going to basically type the same thing they they give you anyway. So why do, you, why do you have to spend time typing it out? I mean, if you're just learning, I think it's better to actually type out the, uh, type out the code because, you know, it helps you learn as you type. But if you're already experienced that you know what you're doing, then just copy the goddamn code. All right. All right. Um, so the next thing we could do is go back to the button and set our data callback. As you can see, it's set. Now the user data, we don't have a decoder structure. What do we want to pass in here instead? Well, we want to pass in. We want to pass in the FIFO, the FIFO pointer. Okay, because that's where our audio data is actually stored. So the data callback is actually a function that will be called when the um, when the audio device needs to render audio frames it's gonna call it and ask us for the number of for uh, some number of samples that we can then give to it and then it's gonna play back that audio frame okay all right um cool 
But what else do we need to do then? Well, let's take a look. We have MA device start. Have we initialized the device? Yep. No, we actually haven't. We just initialize the device config. So we actually have to in initialize the device and then we have to start the device. So let's take a look. Now, this is it. So you see MA device in it and MA device start. So this is going to initialize the device using the configuration that we passed in here. And if it doesn't return MA success, then something bad happened and we should probably return something. All right, but we cannot return. We cannot, we don't have a decoder again. So we're gonna delete this. All right, uh, so the next thing we gotta do is um, free some memory. So basically after we've created the device configuration, we need to delete all of the allocated memory for FFmpeg, and that we're gonna do it after here once we've. Uh, so the only thing we're not gonna uh, 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 free is the FIFO because it contains the buffer that we actually need. All right. So I'm gonna do AV audio FIFO. Um, oh, sorry, not audio FIFO. AV format close input. Uh, the format context, and that should close the format context. I need to free the frame, frame free, oh, crap, frame, AV packet free, packet, and what else do we need to free actually, let me check, um, so we free, okay, so we need to free our resampler, and that looks like it, oh, we also need to free our decoder because we're done using it, right, so AV codec, uh, free context. I think that's what it's called. Yep. Uh, codec context. And now we also need to free our resampler. So SWR free our resampler. And we're done. We actually are good programming citizens because we have freed all the memory required uh, that we need. All right. Cool. So now we've started the device and once we start a device, you can see it starts the device and begins playback, which means it starts to call this method, this data callback that we have. Okay, so this data callback is gonna request audio buffers from us that we need to give back and then it's gonna play back the audio. And if it fails to start, then it fails to start, we're gonna free all the required memory. At the end of the day though, if we run this, me if, if we were to run the program right now, it's gonna decode everything and it's gonna start the device but the program is going to stop running because we reach the end of our main method and our program is going to terminate so we have to keep running this program until something until we're done playing back the entire audio and how do we do that we have while wow, AV audio FIFO um, size all right and this is just the FIFO so basically, I'm simply saying here that while we have something to read from the FIFO, just stay there and don't do shit. Uh, this is pro this is actually bad because you probably want to wait for some time before you check again uh, because this is going to use the 100% uh, of the CPU. So I'm actually not going to do it because I hate bad practice. Um, so what can we use to actually wait? I don't know. Let me see. Actually, I'm not going to do this. I'm just, I'm just going to do get chow and so this means that it's gonna wait until it's time to um, it's gonna wait until the user presses maybe the enter button and then once you press the enter button then it's gonna terminate the program all right I think that's cool I think that's good enough for this example and then we're going to free the audio FIFO free the FIFO just like that and lastly, we have to free all of this. So MA device, I mean it, device. And yes, I think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. And so what we need to do now is, no, we can't test this yet because we haven't actually done anything in our data callback. We don't care about an MA decoder so we're just gonna delete this just like that so what we're gonna do now is call AV audio FIFO read 
passing in okay we don't actually have the FIFA structure taken out yet so we're gonna do um, wait a minute PR pool PMP frame count oh yes sorry um, so I'm gonna do EV audio FIFA FIFA and then we're gonna do uh, we interpret cast to an AV audio FIFO uh, P device user data. Alright, so basically, we're getting back our audio FIFO from what we passed it in inside the other function uh, at the bottom right there. Um, so now we need to pass in the FIFO. Uh, it's asking us for data, which is like where do we want to store the data? Well, we're gonna store it in P output, I think, and then the number of samples is just gonna be the frame count, and this is supposed to be the address of the P output. Uh, let me just double check to make sure that it's the P output. Uh, I think it is. Yes, it actually is, and this should actually do good, but we don't actually know that yet because we haven't actually tested so. Uh, let's run this and see what is this what is this what is this I don't think I have GDP what cut cutling what is this talking about hmm. I don't really know what this is talking about okay I actually need to use CMake to do this I don't know yep CMake wrong without the bugging and uh, so CMake is gonna help me do the compilation and try to run the program and we'll see if we get any crashes or bugs so far um, we actually did great we just have less than one um, you know we have less than 200 lines of code so far so we're doing great uh, but we don't know if our program is actually gonna work so yeah we gotta wait I don't know why this is this is taking like I don't know ages to build I think Visual Studio Code is just too slow I I don't know what I'm supposed to do um, I don't know I think it's better I should I, th I think I'm just gonna go look for another IDE to use for um, C++ development while I'm recording videos cuz I don't know why it's taking this long. What exactly is it doing? <laughs> oh crap. Um, I think I should just probably execute this myself. Because I've never seen anything. Shit. <sighs> okay. I'm gonna wait for five seconds. Four, three, two, <laughs> one. Shit. This is crazy. I swear to God. I'm gonna run it myself and see what's going on. Alright, uh, CD to build. Um, then I'm gonna do. What is all this? Ninja, do I have Ninja? Yes, I, I do have Ninja. Okay. Um, so it's compiling the main.cpp. And. I can't remember if I actually included the SW. Okay, I did. And just to warn you, by the way, the um, what is the name of this library? The ME audio is actually about I think two point five megabytes. Or oh, I'm I can't really remember the uh, the mini audio file. So it's actually pretty large. So including it in the um in the in your program can actually take some time to compile but take a look it actually failed um it says dso missing from command line p thread join oh this is crazy i don't know what that means but i'm just gonna go back and include m i think that's like the math library i don't but i don't know where that error is actually coming from um, I'm gonna go back to the terminal and run ninja again and it fails again it says DSO missing from the command line what the hell is that p thread let's see if, if we include p thread it's gonna change anything 
I doubt it. I doubt it. But let's just try it. Shit. Now what? DL close. Are you kidding me? Well, this is getting interesting. It's actually needing the DL. I don't know. I don't know. This is not. This is not good. This is not so not good. <sighs> Jesus Christ. So I had to. I've never actually in my life had to. Oh, sorry. Uh, actually, that was my fault. I was using pthread and uh, libdl uh, before I actually included the mini audio library. Um, um, so I didn't know that one of his dependencies was pthread and uh, dl, and that was probably why this wasn't building. Uh, you know, it was kind of weird because ffmpeg actually never. I think they use all these dependencies, but they actually refer to them properly because you know I'm using actually this system. Uh, build library so he knows how to refer using the R path and oh, I'm just saying a bunch of nonsense. Let's just run this Vimpeg audio decoding. Let's see. What do we got? good uh, and then I press the enter key and I get a segmentation fault should we figure why should we try to figure out why that actually happened I think I might know you know probably we 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 closed the whole thing um, you know I probably should do this before I should do this before I you know, maybe this is going to stop the callback from running before I actually free the FIFO, right? So let's uh, actually try to compile that again using Ninja, Ninja, and then we're gonna see uh, again. I don't know how long have I actually been recording. Uh, I've been recording for jeez, an hour, and oh, that's crazy. <laughs> an hour. I wasn't really planning for this to take that long, but yeah, it's cool. All right, um, this is taking longer than I expected. I think it's probably because this file is just huge. I don't know. I don't know. It's just too huge. Uh, but it's linking it now, and I could run it. Yeah, so I press the enter key again as you can see I didn't get a segmentation for it because uh, I'm actually cleaning up properly. Alright, um, this video is taking way too long, longer than I actually planned for it to be but it's fine. I hope this video helped you in some way and um, yeah, I'll see you in hopefully the next video. Bye bye. I